So in these uh, multiple books that you have written, and all of them are uh, very popular, award-winning bestsellers, uh, what was your first book? And consequently, what were the other books that you came up with? And when did your journey as a book coach happen? Thank you. So many, many answers to this. <laughs> um, so my first book was called Marketing with a Heart. Right. And kind of what it sounds like, the idea that marketing can be a form of service and a way to help people. Right. If you have something that's going to help people, let them know. Right. Get it into their hands. So marketing with a heart was my first one. Uh, second one was called Influence with a Heart, about being a better leader and communicator by using more empathy and story and thought leadership. And then the third book was The Influence with a Heart Method. So it was about standing out as an expert by writing a book so you can help more people with your message. And then the fourth book, which was published earlier this year, I co-wrote with someone. It's called The Influencer's Formula. And it's the subtitle. I think it's how to create a global thought leadership masterpiece with a podcast or book. Right? So this whole idea of standing out as an expert and making a difference with your message um, and really stepping into the the leadership role, um, whether it's official or not, but stepping into the leader that you are, being being that person, you know, in inhabiting that space, because I think that's something that uh that we all need to do and, and keep doing. And the the <laughs> how this all started is I'm gonna go back in time a little bit. Uh so I visited India two months, two times in my life, uh, once for two months in the South and the second time for five months in the North. And when I was there in the South for the two months, with I was on a hike and within a 72 hour period, um, I faced death like four times in a row, right? I, on the way to the hike, my bus almost went off the cliff or off the mountain, literally almost off. Uh, and then on the hike, ended up having to run from a wildfire. Right? The, the, <laughs> my guide turned to me and he said, run. And I didn't know why. And we ran <laughs> and found out it was a, fire, uh, a wildfire and then encountered a poisonous snake and then also encountered a mountain lion all in this very, very short space. So the reason why I'm telling this story is, is because the my gratitude for being alive was tremendous at that moment or those moments, right, for making it through. And just the, the even more so that galvanizing my purpose, right, wanting to help, wanting to make a bigger impact just became so much more important Oh my goodness, I'm alive, right? Like whatever I do for the rest of my life, I have to help, right? So, so that was one thing. <laughs> and then second time I was in India, I got ready to do a long hike, a nine-day hike in the Himalayas this time. And I showed up to India uh, with, with old boots. I didn't get new boots, which wasn't a good idea. Because the backstory is that for about a decade and a half before that, I had done way too many drugs and partied way too much. And I think this some of this was a function of feeling alone and feeling lonely and feeling out of place, right? So all these kinds of things. So finally stopped all of that. And I went back to India because I needed to get my head together. And I do this hike with these with with the, the boots and it, I ran around the town that I was in, we're, we're up in Ladakh, ran around the town saying, does anyone have a size 13 US shoe? And they're like, no, absolutely not. Cause I'm the tallest person around. <laughs> so I end up getting the boots fixed and the, in fixing the boots, there were two extra kind of bumps, pieces of fabric that made two very big blisters on my Achilles tendons. So for nine days of hiking, for eight or six or eight hours a day, every single step was ow, 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 ow. 
uh, right? Uh, and and you know the anger at myself and what an idiot you are and how could you do all these things and et cetera, et cetera, all sorts of all sorts of chatter, right? All sorts of monkey mind. So day five or day six of this hike, you know, I'm looking at the mountains around me, right up in the Himalayas. It's so beautiful. And everything is, is extra beautiful. And I'm looking around, I'm like, why is it so beautiful? Like, I'm not on drugs. Why is it so beautiful? And I realized, oh, for the first time in my life, I've actually been in the present moment for these last five days because of each of those painful footsteps, right? It, it was not what I would have chosen, but it brought me into that space. And I went, oh, this is what it means. This is why... People are talking about the present moment and why it's so important. So this happens, and then 12 years later, <laughs> right? Because sometimes it takes a minute to figure things out. 12 years real later, I realized that that experience, I understood the difference between pain and suffering, right? The pain is a part of our human experience, physical, mental pain, emotional pain, spiritual pain. Right, but the suffering is is what we add to it, right? And so much of the time, that suffering is optional, right? So, so those two things were foundational ultimately in the book writing, because I became an entrepreneur. Somebody asked me to help them in their business, became an entrepreneur, and it took almost ten years to figure out what I actually was doing, <laughs> right? I had no business training, you know, none of that stuff, right? So figuring things out, figuring things out. I wrote the first book, Marketing with a Heart, still figuring things out, doing public speaking, figuring things out. And then somebody reaches out to me and I just changed my business name on LinkedIn, right? Influence with a Heart. Somebody reaches out and, and she says, hey, we're an event planning company. We have a two-day training coming up at Stanford University. There are this group of visiting business people from one company, about 130 people. They're going to be visiting uh, Twitter and Google and LinkedIn and Facebook, and then they're going to come to Stanford for this training. Do you want to give the training? And I was like, oh, my goodness, of course I want to give the training. Right. So we sign the contract, figure out all the things. And I say to the event planner, said, and I had learned this from a business coach, I said, hey, I want to make this event really special for the audience and, and for your staff and everybody. I'm going to show up with autographed copies of my brand new book for everyone in the audience for free. And then I'll, I'll stay for some photos. She said, wow, that's amazing. Thank you. I said, you're welcome. I hung up the phone and I went, oh, no. I have to write that book that I just promised, right? And from the promise to the event, I only had six and a half weeks. Yes. So I had to write the book in three weeks, get it produced, show up with books, and it turned out the event went really well. The audience loved it. The event planning company hired me for several more speaking gigs. Uh, the audience was from Australia. They hired me to come speak in Sydney, Australia the next year. And then as I was, if we go back in time slightly, I got the book cover designed as I was frantically writing it. And I put it up on LinkedIn and I said, hooray, I'm so excited. My new book is coming soon. And somebody reached out to me, a different person and said, hey, we just saw, saw your book is coming. We're creating a mindfulness and empathy video game with a Fortune 100 company and MIT. It's going to be played by 20,000 people. Would you like to write the curriculum? And I said, of course I'd like to write the curriculum. <laughs> right? And that turned into a 10-month consulting project with this Fortune 100 company. And that project happened before I even finished my book, or at least got started before I finished my book, right? So those two experiences, right, the Stanford talk and then the Fortune 100 company video game, I looked at those two situations and I went, wait a minute, 
I can teach people how to do that, right? I can teach them how to get their book done quickly, right? In as little as five weeks, that's my methodology. And then I can help them with the publishing. But first and foremost, I can show them how to get clients and strategic partners before the book is done by having conversations about the book. And that's how I created this business.